Okay, this is part 10 of the Blender Game Engine Physics tutorial series for new Blender users. And so let's just take a look at this uh, simulation again that we looked at a moment ago. Let's see. So it comes down here and it's rotating. And now notice in this case, if we look up close, I just have recently changed the radius of this object because it comes down here and it rotates and it's going through the plane. It seems kind of unnatural. So let's go into wireframe mode for a little bit and bring this, If say as this was just wrapped around the object slightly like this. We're going to do two things here in this lesson and then I'll go back into here and run it and you'll notice it cuts through the plane so it seems really unnatural. Alright, so we could try by changing the radius back up to way up, maybe 1.4, something like that. So we'll see what it looks like. So it's way out, so the collision's way out there. And then when we run the simulation, now you see it doesn't cut through the plane. So, but if you look at it from this angle, way down here, let's see if we can get that even closer. Well, it's almost close enough. Let's see. So you can see it's actually above the plane, like that. All right, so that's better and that works in that case so sometimes adjusting the radius works but if you wanted a more precise way to do it you could use these collision bounds like we looked at before and let's say we use the cone as the collision bound and then we took the radius and we dropped the radius say that back down to one for its default value and now let's run it and see what happens then now you really see where the performance issue really comes in because it has to boundary check against a great a much greater surface than just a cube, which is a typical default boundary check. I don't know exactly what the default boundary check is in with the game engine, but that's my guess. All right, let's see what it looks like from an angle like this. But so you would see that, you know, if you're running some kind of really cool simulation, suddenly these kind of collision bounds aren't going to work for any kind of real, real-time interactive game. So changing that radius is uh, the issue that will that can help you out. So a lot of it's kind of, sometimes it's kind of faking it, you know, making it look right, changing the angle to camera. So you maybe you're looking at it like this, you know, and it's just like, well, I can barely see it cutting through, but I change that radius like that. And then it's rotating just fine, and you, you don't really know if it's not sitting on the surface or not, or it may be an issue of the types of shadows that you use, because the shadows can make a huge difference. You know, the shadow point might be separated from the object near the surface and it'll that'll give the effect of it not sitting on the surface so a uh, little techniques like that uh, really come into play and then the one other thing uh, you might change is this in here if you take a look at let's see I'll go ahead and zoom into this a little bit notice the location of this when it let's see where it's rotating See the, the rotation point is kind of, it looks like it's up near here at the top. Well, because it is, because that's where, it's, that's the origin of this particular object when you added it to the scene. But you would say, well, at least I would say, go, well, that doesn't really seem like the center of mass in the scene because most of the mass associated with the object is down here. But yet, that's the origin of the object itself. When the object's built, it's not really being built, obviously, from a you know using considering the center of mass so what you can do is something like this you can go into edit mode and with everything selected make sure it's all selected like this then grab your arrow and you can move it up to say like this or maybe down here where I would think the center of mass would be more like down in here and then I'll go out of edit mode so then my rotation that should actually change my rotation point as well let's see what happens uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Well, let's see because it's kind of hard to tell. But all right, but let's see. Let's see if we can actually. Let's try it to verify. Let's make sure we verify this. Let's move it so it's right up at the tip, like this. And now let's see where the rotation point is going to be. When it should be around the tip. Oh, it is. There it is like that. All right. So that's one way you can affect the change of things. That's a powerful, powerful technique as well. And uh, the other thing is that, well, let me see. Well, if we rotate it around, this guy still works. Bounces him through there. And then if you notice, let's put him back to the center. Let's see. 
right about the center and that will affect this radius button as well because notice now it sits pretty much around you know closer to the edges like that He's sitting in there versus if I had the origin if I had the origin up at that point then notice where my radius is it's sitting up here so now if I run the simulation you just better go into shade texture mode and run the simulation see then it's bouncing way through the scene like that so then in that case I would actually want to change the radius button this to be much larger here or I'd have to change the collision bounds like that let's go here run that still not quite enough let's make it up here and there we go alright so all these really come into play but now it's a powerful little you know technique well there you see the new problem there yeah right there what's your other problem is now that your radius is so far out to prevent it from hitting the surface it's also very far out from your <laughs> other objects that are hit colliding with it so that can kind of goof it so once again it comes back to one thing a lot of it's about tweaking the simulation to make it work for you okay well that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson